Joan Trimpower Mulholland was a white woman in the South, active during the Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was one of the most influential movements throughout history. There's no turning back. You can't just decide in the middle of it, oops, I don't want to do this and hop off the bus or something. Once you're in it, you're in it. The worst that can happen is you're going to die. And once you accept that, you don't have to worry about it. So we may as well make it worthwhile. The civil rights movement changed the lives of thousands when those like Joan, who felt a dramatic change in society was necessary, took a stand against the injustices of the world, a great force for good was awakened. Joan was able to affect the movement in a unique way because of her distinct position in the South as an educated white woman. The thought of death did not hinder on this heroine's determination to make a change and to take a stand. A major event in the battle for equality was the 1896 Supreme Court case Plessy v. Ferguson, where the court legalized segregation. Jim Crow laws were implemented, allowing the continuation of the horrific treatment of African Americans. Often, lynchings and beatings went unpunished. A call for action was heard near and far as the story of Emmett Till's murder in 1955 swept the nation. The movement was brought to the attention of many activists, including Joan. Joan was born September 19, 1941 in Arlington, Virginia. As a young girl, Joan attended weekly church meetings and was taught that God loves all of his children, despite their differences. Joan's Sunday school teachers were astronaut John Glenn and his wife. Senator Glenn's teachings, paired with the secret spaghetti dinners hosted by her pastor, fueled Joan's passion to make a change. At these dinners, she would sit and enjoy the company of both black and white. This proved to Joan that skin color was not grounds for the hatred and brutality that seemed to grip at the hearts of those around her. Joan recalls being impacted by the Constitution. Its iconic line, all men are created equal, contradicted Southern society norms. Standing for a cause was in her DNA. Joan's great-grandmother was a suffragette who chained herself to the Iowa State Capitol. Her great-grandmother provided an example for her to emulate. Joan herself said, I don't think you're ever really aware of the consequences of your actions. We knew we could be arrested. We knew we probably would be arrested. But where it would go from there, I didn't know. I couldn't make a difference if I did nothing, and they were asking us to stand, so I did. On June 4th, 1961, 19-year-old Joan joined a freedom ride starting in Jackson, Mississippi and going to New Orleans. She hid journal pages in her skirt to document the violence she experienced along the ride. Because of Joan's involvement in the Freedom Rides, she was arrested. In a documentary made by Joan's son, Loki, Joan recalled being put in the back of a truck, not knowing their destination or what would happen once they reached it. She was taken to Parchman Penitentiary, where she shared a small cell with two other women. Joan was offered a three-month sentence or a $200 bail. She took the first option in order to pack the jail. The Freedom Riders followed Mahatma Gandhi's example of peacefully packing jails as a form of protest. At this time, the governor of Mississippi ordered Parchman to break their spirits, not their bones. Those who were arrested faced grotesque life in prison, but held their heads high as they sang to lift morale. Guards seized their mattresses and bug screens, but that couldn't stop the singing or the feeling of hope in the air of the dismal prison. Joan received a telegram from fellow activist Jane Sai Sia while in Parchman that read, Congratulations, we shall overcome. Wish we were there, kid, rather a jailbird than bigot any day. Joan's cell was right around the corner from the death chamber. However, Joan was unaware of her cell's location until years after, in 2011, when she returned to the penitentiary for the 50-year anniversary of the Freedom Rides. This specific tactic may have been used to intimidate the riders into submission. Humanitarianist Margaret Mead said, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. This small group of thoughtful, committed citizens called the Freedom Riders took a stand for the thing they believed in, equality and justice. After Joan was released from Parchman, she played a crucial role in the integration of Tougaloo College. Joan was the first white person to attend the colored-only Tougaloo College. 
On her first night living in the dorms, Joan was mistaken for a ghost by a fellow student due to her flowy nightgown and her pale complexion. Joan's enrollment prompted many attempts to shut down the school. In January of 1963, an article was published in Ebony Magazine that highlighted Joan's attendance and its significance. She also received many threatening letters while attending Tougaloo from African Americans worried of her motives and whites who knew this was the first step of its kind towards equality. These roadblocks did not hinder Joan's progression forward. She was invited to join the all-black sorority Delta Sigma Theta, where she met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Her acceptance into this sorority was another outward symbol of her stand against the moral traditions of Southern society. Joan also participated in the 1963 Woolworth Counter Sit-In. So the sit-ins beginning in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1960 were designed to deal with a common problem that existed for blacks throughout the South. And that is they could frequent certain stores like Woolworths. They could frequent stores, they could buy things in the stores, but they were not allowed to eat in the stores. So the idea was, here we're patronizing the store, here we're giving their mon our money, yet we're treated like second-class citizens, and that's simply wrong. One of the most iconic pictures from the civil rights movement came from this event. It features three young adults, NAACP Field Secretary John Salter, Joan, and activist Ann Moody at the counter, solemn-faced as food and drink are poured over them. Joan is in the center of this picture, facing away from the camera. She recalls over 200 people pouring into Woolworths, vying to hurt her and the other protesters. Meanwhile, local police helped pack more people into the chaotic store. Activist Memphis Norman was pulled from his seat at the counter, dragged outside, and severely beaten. Joan quickly took his vacant seat at the counter. She was then dragged from the counter by her hair, but police interference between her and her aggressor allowed Joan to return to her seat at the counter with even more determination than before. Her swift reaction in the face of terror was admirable and her passion for creating a change continued to skyrocket. Joan's involvement in such earth-shattering events resulted in the seeking of her execution by the Ku Klux Klan in the summer of 1963. She was caught once but escaped by sheer luck. Joan continued to support the civil rights movement through registering African Americans to vote after the passing of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. She was also part of the famous march from Selma to Montgomery in 1965. Later, in September of 1965, the Ku Klux Klan bombed the 16th Street Baptist Church, killing four young girls in the explosion. Joan recalls their funeral as the saddest day of the civil rights movement. She collected some pieces of shattered stained glass window and fashioned it into a necklace and wore it for years after the movement. She then donated it to the Smithsonian, where it is currently on display. The events that Joan was involved in rewrote history and were life-changing events that affected generations and will continue to affect generations throughout all time. Just through the color of her skin, Joan was able to reach others in the South that Dr. King, Malcolm X, and Rosa Parks were unable to. For many Southerners, the actions of civil rights leaders didn't have much of an impact. Joan, however, was able to reach an unreachable crowd and convince them of the unjust horrors of racism and its toxic grasp on society. Though African Americans were cautious of her efforts at first, they soon grew to love Joan as it became evident that her passion and love for all could not outweigh the consequences of standing and choosing to make a difference. Joan became close friends with martyr Medgar Evers, who was shot and killed by the KKK. Joan regularly visits his grave, where she will sit and talk to him, letting him know about the impact their efforts are still having on society. Today, Joan continues to impact the lives of others by encouraging equality and serving around the world. In early 2017, she embarked on a service mission to South Africa and to Siberia. She speaks to crowds across the nation and was recognized by President Obama for her impact. Her foundation, the Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation, is dedicated to the belief that anyone can make a difference. It inspires people to do so by sponsoring classroom improvement and progression and encouraging young people to have the courage to stand up for what they believe in, as Joan did. Joan's legacy inspires us to improve our community through serving others selflessly and promoting the importance of equality.